Hey everyone, you can't hardly find the mention of Social Security benefits in any article or TV coverage without the discussion of its impending demise. Now, the bankruptcy of Social Security is what they generally refer to it, and I do think that this is something you need to understand because we do have a real problem facing us in just a few years. But to get the full picture, you have to know how Social Security is funded and how the two trust funds work. And if you get this, It'll help you put the many rumors about its impending demise into context and have a better understanding when you hear these discussions. So there are two separate trust funds that handle Social Security's finances. There's the OASI Trust Fund, and that stands for the Old Age and Survivors Insurance. And then there's the DI Trust Fund, and that stands for the Disability Insurance. Now, although they are legally two distinct trust funds. They are often referred to collectively as the Social Security Trust Fund, and you'll often see the term OASDI used, and that's simply referring to both the Old Age and Survivors Trust and the Disability Trust put together. And for purposes of today's video, we're going to mostly be looking at these together and just referring to both of them as the Trust Fund. Now, the Trust Fund works like your bank account. All of the income comes into this fund, and all of the expenses are paid out of this fund. If you look at the total income versus total expenses of the trust fund since 1957, you can see that there's been many years where more income has come in than has gone out in expenses. The blue bars is the income of the trust fund, and the orange bars is the cost of the trust funds. And just like a bank account, these funds have piled up to where now there's nearly $3 trillion that's accumulated. But due to changing conditions, the costs are expected to be higher than the income over the next few decades. And that means that all of the money that's piled up in the account is going to be spent. And once it's empty, which is estimated to be around 2034, the only source of funding will be the current income coming in. And that's projected to be enough to meet about 75% of the expenses. But since we're talking about how the program is funded, let's quickly address the method that's used since there's no actual vaults of money there. When deposits come in from any of the methods of how Social Security is funded, the Treasury Department makes an accounting entry in the trust fund. So there's no actual physical money that's moved into a lockbox. It's just a digital entry just like is made for all of the other government spending. Now, this trust fund buys special issue certificates and bonds that are only used for these trust funds, and these investments pay interest, which we'll get into in a moment. When the money needs to come out of the trust fund to pay benefits or other expenses, these special issue investments are sold to meet those expenses. So let's talk about the income that comes in. In 2021, the trust funds had just over a trillion dollars in income. Now, the largest piece of income to the trust fund is through the payroll tax. If you look at your W-2, you'll see your contributions to the Social Security system through this payroll tax. The total tax is 12.4%, but if you're an employee, one half of that is paid for you by your employer. This means that most people pay 6.2% to the Social Security trust funds, and you only pay that tax up to the taxable cap for that year. So, for example... This year, the taxable cap is $147,000, and that generally increases every year. So any earnings over that are not subject to that portion of payroll taxes. Of that 6.2% you pay, 5.3% is paid to the OASI trust fund, and 0.9% is paid to the DI trust fund. Again, this is the largest piece of income of the trust funds. In 2021, the trust funds had total income of just under $1.1 trillion in payroll taxes, alone accounted for $980 billion of that. Now, the next piece of funding comes from interest payments. Remember the chart from earlier where there was a long stretch of years where the income was higher than the expenses? Well, that surplus was invested, and these investments pay interest. In 2021, the investments of the trust earned just a slight amount over $70 billion in interest payments. Now, that's certainly a lot of money, but that's one of the areas of contention. There are some who say we should have taken Bill Clinton's advice and invested this surplus so we could get a higher rate of return than the special issue treasury notes. An example of this would be the Railroad Retirement Board, which has averaged more than 8% per year. Now, that's a big difference when you compare it to the 2.3% that the Social Security Trust Fund is receiving. The next piece of Social Security funding comes from the taxation of benefits. In 2021, the taxes collected on benefit payments came up to nearly $38 billion. 
Now, that's a relatively small percentage of the income, but it certainly can't be ignored. And that's why I think the proposals we've seen floating to abolish the taxes on Social Security are probably more about getting in the news than they are about actually becoming law. And then finally, we have a very small part of income that comes from general fund reimbursements. This is from small things like temporary payroll tax credits that have happened through the years. And in 2021, this was only about a million dollars. So small that you can't even see it in this chart. So all totaled up, that's where the nearly 1.1 trillion in Social Security trust fund income comes from. And since we're talking about the income, let's break down the cost of the programs real quick too. The first and by largest is the cost of the benefit payments. That makes up 99% of the outflow from the trust fund. The remainder is about $6.5 billion in administrative cost, and that's to pay the salaries for all the employees and for the offices that you can go into, the service centers, so on and so forth. And then there's about $4.9 billion that's transferred back to the railroad retirement program from a 1951 agreement. So now you should have a better understanding of how Social Security is funded and have a better grasp on the inside operations of the system. Thanks for watching.